This video is part two of your study guide answers. Keep in mind your test is on Monday, January 11th for A days and for B days it's on January 12th on Tuesday. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the second section of your study guide. Filling in the blank. The Roanoke colony is known as the blank colony. Explain why this colony was given this particular name. We know it was called the Lost Colony of Roanoke. And we know that because the explorers returned from England and the colony had disappeared. And no one knows exactly what happened. We obviously know now that they could have um, joined the Croatan Indians, or perhaps, perhaps they died of starvation, or maybe even they left as a group to go further inland. But as far as that colony surviving, we call it the Lost Colony and it was a failed attempt at a, a settlement. Number two, identify and explain the problems of Jamestown. The pictures give you a lot of clues, but there were a lot of hardships at Jamestown and many people died of disease, hunger, not everyone was working, and the London company back in England was making all of the decisions. So these created a lot of problems for the colonists who were there in Virginia. They did have to overcome these hardships in order for that colony to survive. And it is the first permanent English settlement in North America, so it did survive the hardships. Number three, what was the purpose for the Puritans and Pilgrims to come to America? And obviously these two pictures are supposed to give you clues. Religious freedom being able to worship God the way that they wanted to, which was different than the uh, Church of England back in um, England. The pilgrims actually wanted to separate from the Church of England, whereas the Puritans wanted to purify or um, make pure the religion that was being practiced in England. Number four, based on what you know, how would you explain the House of Burgesses? So keep in mind, group of men, how were they different from a group of men who would have made decisions somewhere else? They were the first representative government in America. Those who were elected to make these decisions were elected by the people living in Jamestown. They were also able to know what kind of problems were going on there. And this was helpful to be able to make effective and accurate decisions without having to wait a couple months to get a response from those in England. Number five, on November 11th, 1620, the Pilgrims signed the blank. By signing this document, they agreed to be blank by the will of the blank. The first one is the actual document, the Mayflower Compact. They're agreeing to be governed by the will of the majority. Number six, explain the Puritan ethic and be sure to include all the parts. Ooh, it looks like th three of those were already given to you there, but the pictures should really help you as well. The Puritan ethics was are the beliefs that America was founded on, the right to participate in government, the right to education, hard work and good deeds for the betterment of the community, and strong moral beliefs were all part of the Puritan ethic. How would you describe interdependence? This was a vocabulary word from the beginning of our unit. Look at each of these maps, which you're now very familiar with, and the products that are used in all of these regions. How could each of these regions and colonies benefit from the products grown there? Interdependence basically means that the colonies depended on each other and traded for the things that they did not grow or make themselves. And we can see that from the things grown down in the south, like corn and pigs, um, indigo, rice, tobacco from the things in the middle colony, particularly cattle and timber and wheat, also different from that grown in New England, like furs and the shipbuilding industry and fishing. 
how would you describe specialization? So this question basically hinges right on the last question. When the colonies produce certain goods or services that are only from their areas, they are specialized. For instance, Georgia produced peaches, still does, and Maine produces lobsters. You can't get lobsters in Georgia. The water's too warm there. And in Maine, you can't grow peaches. The climate is just too cold there. But because of being a specialized product from those regions, they can depend on one another through interdependence to benefit from their specialization. Okay, this table um, gets filled in. So let's go ahead and look at the left side. Indentured servants. Who were these people? They were people who worked for seven years to gain passage to America and then they were free. So when you think of an indentured servant, I want you to think of someone who could not afford to cross the Atlantic Ocean. So someone in the New World, in America, paid for their passage and then they were in debt to that person for seven years and they were able to pay off their debt by working for them. Captain John Smith, what is his name is saying? What would you match there? If you don't work, you don't eat. And remember, he was the leader of Jamestown and part of its survival. The next blank is one of the terms. What's the term that means skilled craftsmen, like silversmiths? The word would be artisans. And lastly, who is Squanto? Why was he important? He was the Patuxent Indian who helped the pilgrims in order for to... All right, continuing this chart, what was the group of people who uh, were honest, simple in manner, and they were pacifists? Remember, pacifists means that they do not fight or conduct war. This was the religious group called the Quakers. Which term... Um, meant that were considered to be property and they were brought from Africa to work for nothing. This would be slaves. This is going back to fourth grade, but who is the Indian princess who married John Rolfe and saved John Smith's life? You're familiar with Pocahontas. What should you know about colonial women in this time period? They had very few rights, few official rights, and they worked in the home, primarily in their home. Who was a proprietor? A proprietor, were they were people who were given the right to set up control of a colony in America. They oftentimes elected a governor who would be a liaison or a middleman between themselves and the colony. And this is kind of covered up, but it says the government in England. What was the government in England called? You can see the building on the left-hand side. It's still standing there. This is where the government in England meets and makes decisions for the empire and has for many, many years. What is that government called? Parliament. And finally, who was a Burgess? What was a Burgess? This was a person, the name for the colonial legislator. And a legislator is a person who would make the laws.